Oh, well, here we are. What's up, Facebook? Coming live from Big Booty Support Group and all the other channels. Um, just want to say hello to everyone. Um, we have a serious subject tonight. Um, have a little fun with you guys, and uh, maybe we can get some, you know, some answers and find out if we know what we're doing in the bedroom. Okay, so I'm going to wait until some people show up uh, because I don't want to be talking to myself. How about that? So, um, well, I had an awesome day today. It was very, uh, I woke up and had a beautiful day. Um, just, you know, it was a beautiful day today. Even outside, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. You know, um, the walk-ins, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. We are not looking forward to the winter and we know it's coming. So, um, I wanted, you know, to talk about this subject for a minute because, <clears throat> you know, I noticed that a lot of people don't know what the word tantric sex means. I'm going to put a link in the in the uh, comment section, and if you want to join me on live uh, in person, you may do so. Okay, so there's the link, and um, feel free to join me. But yeah, this subject is very um, personal. Um, as something that I actually didn't know anything about um, growing up and uh, learning about my body and learning about, um, you know, the ins and outs and do's and don'ts of, um, you know, sex, uh, making love, um, smashing pumpkins, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, um, but tantric sex is like a spiritual connection during sex. Um, I don't know if you guys ever had a spiritual connection with someone while you were um, engaging in intimacy, but it's totally different from just regular sex, totally different. And um, uh, I'm going to read to you the re the meaning of the word tantric. It's an Indian um, saying, and it's an Indian practice through Hinduism and um, Buddhism. And um, it has a really interesting meaning to it. So, well, so that you guys understand what I'm talking about, uh, if you do regular sex um, and you're connecting to, if you don't connect to someone, it's actually, it's more like a connection where you enjoying everything about it. Like tantric is, you know, where you feel the person's hands, you feel the, feel the way it comes, way it surrounds your body, where it touches you. Um, tantric sex can also mean that you you know, you stare at them and you get into them as just staring at them. You know, you see um, more than what's there and that spiritual and um, sexual energy is heightened when you tune into that person before you get to a point of intimacy. Um, it's about enjoying the person um, before it becomes physical, right before it comes becomes physical. And continuing on that path with that person as it gets better. Um, and I wanted to know, you know, how many people understand what the word tantric means. Um, I'm still looking for the, uh, trying to pull this up so I, I can make sure that I, yeah, here we go. Well, Okay, hold on a minute. Uh, 
Okay, now here. The word tantric sex means it's a method of sexual intercourse that aims to achieve mindfulness and deep connection for the participants throughout breathing, prolonged eye contact, embraces, massages, and slow, deliberate intercourse. So it's not just physical, just, you know, pounding like bam, 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 you know you know, John Witherspoon type shit, but it's, hold on, I have a guest here, and it's my Jazzy. Hey, Tasha. Yeah, she should come on in a minute, but it's one of those things where you're connecting to the person um, through a lot of different ways is not just, you know, hardcore sex. And a lot of people don't understand what that really means. And that's the reason why I wanted to talk about that tonight, because I know a, a lot of us as women, uh, I know in the beginning, we don't really understand the connection part of it. Some of us do, some of us don't. And when you're engaging in tantric sex, um, it, it, it heightens regular sex. I mean, like to the 10th power, if you do it right. And um, again, tantric sex is the method of sexual intercourse that aims to achieve mindfulness and deep connection for the two people through breathing, prolonged eye contact, embraces, massage, and slow, deliberate intercourse. Please hear that part. Hi, Mark. Hey. Taking it slow, that's all. Enjoy the moment. There? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, what's going on here? Hello? 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 So, Hello? Um, Hello? As my uh, guests try to come on, I don't think anyone... Can you hear me? Well, I have two people on, but they're not showing up yet. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can anyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Text, type, yeah. something. Because I see you there, but I can't hear anyone. And Jasmine is still buffering, so don't know. But I just wanted to know um, tonight: um, Do you have, you know, that type? Have you had that type of connection with the person that you with? Okay, you can hear me and see me. Okay. But I can't hear you or see you, Jasmine. It looks on the screen like it's just still buffering. No, I can't hear you either, Mark. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Is anybody there? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can hear you. <laughs> Make sure you put the scroll on. Okay. Um, and I do that with... Oh, God, I forgot how it goes again. Up at the top. Okay. Remember how you got to your brand? Okay. I do not see. Okay, what am I clicking on? What's up at the top right hand side? Tell me what you see because I'm not on okay. that screen. Um, the screen it just says live, not you know, on the time. Hey, Jazzy, and um. 
see the numbers and everybody there. Hey, honey. <laughs> Umoja. Hey, brother. How are you? Glad you're here. It doesn't have um settings or anything like that, or no, it just says solo layout, unmute. On the upper right hand side. Okay. Upper right hand side. Yeah, it does it says solo layout, but that's it. There's no tabs there? No, I don't see anything. That, that can't be because that's how we got to it last oh, wait, time. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Here we go. Mark, you know I'm special. Okay, banners or brand? Banners. Mm -hmm. And the ticker, right? Yeah. You should okay. click show. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna be with you till nine. I couldn't go to sleep, so I said, "Let me jump on." And um, but I'm at nine. I'm gonna probably have to go so I can try to get some type of sleep. I got you. But yeah, yeah. the subject tonight is about you know, have, and I would like to know: Do people understand, or do you know what the word tantric sex means based on what I explained a few minutes ago? I don't know if anybody heard me. I heard you. But tantric sex, it means, um, I'm going to say it again for the people that just came in, tantric sex versus regular sex. Do you know the difference and do you use tantric sex in your practices and how, how is it for you? Because my experience and me learning about it later in life enhances and it enhanced my sexual experience with the person I was with 10 times more. Hmm. Tantric sex is a method of sexual intercourse that aims to achieve mindfulness and deep connection for its participants through breathing work, prolonged eye contact, embraces, massage, and slow, deliberate intercourse. The Kama Sutra. Yes, ma'am. Yes, whoever that is. It says Facebook user. Yes. So my question tonight is, do you know the difference and what it has, has tantric sex enhanced your sexual experience? You asking me? Yeah, fellow ladies. Anybody can answer that. Oh. Um <laughs> Cuz I'll say this, sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't know that you're doing it, you know, cuz you're doing it that way, but it's a name for that um specific way of, you know, sexual intercourse and intimacy and it's called tantric karma sutra, you know, like whoever that whoever said that um, there's a name for it. And a lot of times, you know, people think that regular sex jumping, you know, I mean, pouncing on someone is actually bonding and connecting to that person and ex their experience. And some people, you know, it may make their sexual experience better. It may do that. I don't know. Doesn't work for me. You know, maybe when I was younger, this shit might have worked. But today, no, that connection has to be there because I know the difference now. I never, I never practice that. I don't know what that is, but it, it seems to me that in order to do that, a lot of it has to do with the person that you're doing it with. It doesn't seem like something that you can do it with just anybody. And um, no. in that sense, in that sense, I won't say I don't believe mm -hmm. it. I'll say I haven't experienced it. Because, because you I'll tell you what. Deeper connection mm -hmm. and da 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 da. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not to say that I haven't enjoyed the sex that I've had, but 
if there's any other type of techniques or whatever that would would fall under that classification, it's clueless right. to me. I don't know anything about it. Okay. Yeah. But for the, me, the, like um, the way that you're describing it sounds like sex mm -hmm. to me. Like from where from my standpoint, okay. it sounds like something I already do. Okay. Because is the the connection I know for I can only speak as a woman um, it heightens you know the the experience of you know getting there it heightens it like ten times that's, for a woman but that that's spiritual mental. connection is there yeah exactly mental spiritual, emotional, however you want to define it, is what's going on in your mind that's, ex that's, that's mm -hmm. enhancing the physicality, which is why I say... Right. And how you feel about the person. The, that is the definition of sex to me. With another, mm -hmm. you know, with a person other than pleasuring yourself. When you have it with a person, that's what you're supposed to have. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't see... And like I said, this is just from my perspective. Because like you said, most people mm -hmm. probably don't do that. Most people will just like um, get in there pounding on each other. And that's their idea of intimacy. Which yeah. is nothing wrong with that because that's that's a part of it. You know, I mean, at some point, yeah. like it's like a, I look at it like. Um, an, like. Mm, I'm trying to describe not like a a, a, a one note song. It's a spiritual. It's you know, a like spiritual a song. thing. No, but I mm -hmm. mean structurally, like um, a song has that opening, the middle, and the end. A movie has the first act, middle act, the end. You know, it's like a a complete composition. Yeah. To me, that's what sex yeah, is. So it's going to be right. It's it's like it's not mm -hmm. just one note. So right. like, yeah, you can go hot and heavy. That's a part of it. But the other part of it is to get, get in there, like working up into that. You reach that crescendo and then you go back mm -hmm. down to this or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's a whole, right. um, it's a song. I just say that a song mm -hmm. or a movie or whatever. It's just a complete composition. Yeah. But yeah. in terms of defining I agree it. With that. Technically, mm -hmm. I don't know, but from what I can gather, it's all <clears throat> mental, emotional, and spiritual. And that, yeah. if you're it's, connected it's on that spiritual. level, then it mm -hmm. helps enhance the physicality. There's yeah. certain things, there's certain techniques that um, I have learned over the mm -hmm. years that um, may classify as that but i might not know what i'm you know like i might not know the name of it what i'm doing but i know mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. techniques i definitely know mm -hmm. techniques to make touch more sensitive yes I, I know i know how to do that mm -hmm. there's a way there's a way that you um enhance touch right there's a way to do it. There's yeah. an actual technique to doing it. And I know that mm -hmm. technique. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, and it's, and it's even better when that person can feel your touch, not just you touching, like, you know, like right, this. Right, right, but right. When you put your hands on someone and they can feel your energy through your hand, to mm -hmm. where it you literally see them move mm -hmm. because they felt your energy through you know right. through your hands. And you can manipulate a, a person to to you can manipulate things in a way so that your touch becomes more dramatic to them than a normal yeah. touch. There's a way to do it. Oh yeah. There's oh a way yeah. To do it. That's what I'm mastering right now. Mm -hmm. I'm and trying I know, to get more I know into how that. to do it, but I ain't saying nothing. Some things you got to keep oh, secret. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I got you. You know, but um, and that's why that was my whole thing too. Is that a lot of times people don't know 
know that right. having tantric sex or you know dealing with the Kama Sutra, you know those those methods, and they think mm -hmm. it's just regular sex, and it's not. You know, yeah. a spiritual connection, and I think as you get older, that's more important to you than just regular sex. I know it is to me. Also, I know yeah, that there's something that a lot of men don't realize I, mm -hmm. is that um, just like women can um, work you up, yeah. you can work women up too. It's just mm -hmm. that a lot of guys don't know how to do it. And it, and it, it requires a certain or level of... I don't want to know how to do it. Some men are just no, I don't think they know. Just I think if they knew how to do it, they probably would, but they just don't know. It's like they're clueless about it because nobody, no, yeah, you know, like I think if we're really honest, age, if we're really honest mm -hmm. about it, most of us learn through trial and error. It's like it's nobody yeah. that taught us, you know what I'm saying? For most, I'm talking about the vast majority of people, it's trial and error. Most people are not yeah. taught these things. Mm -hmm. So I right. can understand the ignorance. Yeah, because I, I wasn't understand. I wasn't taught. Yeah, I wasn't taught anything. Um it just, you know, the person that I was with at the time, it happened. And it mm -hmm. freaked me out because I never experienced it. And I'm like, what the fuck did you just do to me? You know, <laughs> and <laughs> I was I was baffled at how the build up to to what he was doing almost felt like it was one person in bed. Does that make sense? Mm hmm Yeah. You know what it because, is? Um mm -hmm. I think what it is is that when you're with the right person, um it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. It shouldn't be like the fact that you felt it was unusual is what the problem is because it's supposed right. to be that way. That's it's been like my experiences though. Because it's like, you know what it is? It's like my my mentor in production told me something mm -hmm. about watching a movie and it applied to everything in life. And okay. it's something that I've used in everything in life. And he said, watching a movie. It's like having sex. Okay. Because a lot of times when people go and see a movie, especially people who make movies or are involved and who know how to basically how the cake is made, they have a really mm -hmm. difficult time sitting down and watching a movie because all they're doing is looking at all the technical aspects of it. They're looking at the plot line. Mm -hmm. They're trying to detect the plot points and this mm -hmm. and that and whatever. And, and my mentor told me that have, watching movies like having sex, what he meant by that was when you watch the movie, just sit back, turn off your brain, and absorb what the artist is trying to give you. Right. Don't think about the movie. Stop trying to say, oh, this is what's going to happen next. It's almost like, if I could compare it, it's like trying to give blow-by-blow -blow details of oral sex. Oh, look, like, yeah. oh, shit. This is the part where her tongue is on my ball. Impossible. Oh, damn. How predictable. Mm -hmm. Don't you see how she's licking the head? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Shut the fuck up. Sit back. Relax. Mm -hmm. Enjoy what's happening to you. Stop analyzing everything. And he, that's what he said about movies. Mm -hmm. When you watch a movie, you don't try to pick the movie apart and try to look for this and try to predict that. Watch it enjoy it and then when the experience is over then you can yeah. decide whether it was good or not just like with sex yeah but when sex is happening you you don't you can't be outside of yourself looking at yourself or trying to be objective or try you can't be thinking it's not about thinking mm -hmm. it's about enjoying and experiencing because if you're doing too much right. thinking and too much shit is going on, then you're not going to be able to enjoy the experience. And, that, and, and that's, the, that's that, where and, I went. That was uh, that was always my, um, you know, my my hang up was thinking about it too much. And I know I've listened to some of my girlfriends talk about this and some women 
cannot get to an they orgasm can't get out of their head. to That's save why. their life. They can't get out of their head. And they're in, yeah, and I realized that, you know, you're in your head too much. You're trying, you're worried about trying to get there instead of just getting there. You know, you, when, you're worried about the the journey of it and you're not enjoying the journey of it. That's something that women can learn a lot about from men. Mm -hmm. Because men ain't going to let you control their orgasm. They're like, listen, if I'm having sex, I'm going to get an orgasm. Women is on some bull, like women like that is on some bullshit where they like they so in their head that they waiting for some guy to figure out how to get them out of their head. Guys ain't going to do that. The man is like, listen, I'm going to get my nut. So I'm going to work myself up to get it so that I can get it. The woman on the other time, oh, well, you know, I'm not feeling this. Oh, da, 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 da. See, they don't know how to just. And I think it, it, it has to do. Yeah, with, very, um, very timid in bed. It has to do something with what um, Patrice O'Neill said one time that women are not into, they don't know how to be frivolous. And I guess it's because of, of their nature. They don't know how to be frivolous. He said, he said it's, it was funny. It's kind of uh, weird, but it's funny at the same time. He said, men, mm -hmm. men know what it's like to just kill life. Mm -hmm. Just to be frivolous with their sperm. Like we just, you know, okay. we feel like coming on a on a fucking pillow. We can do it, and and it's like it's no big deal. Women don't have yeah. that ability to do that, mm -hmm. so that's why everything is so like they have this. Um, they look at everything so serious, whereas men can be more um. Frivolous is the best word I can use. They're more frivolous, and right. when you're more frivolous, then you relax more. No, you don't take it so seriously, and you just enjoy it. And a lot of them don't yeah. have the ability to do that. And I agree because, you know, I, I know that when I, when I let go in bed, when I just let go, when I stopped mm -hmm. thinking, my orgasms came very quickly. Exactly. And over and over, what the fuck are you thinking about? That's just, the thing. It's like, what the thinking. hell are you thinking about? Those, yeah. It was one of those things where I just stopped thinking. I just said, look here, you, Hey, do, ask do, what the you, guy, do what you do. Ask the guy to explain and analyze a blowjob. Uh huh. We don't <laughs> know. All we know is that our head, eyes is rolling up in the back of the head. Our toes is getting straightened out. That's the only thing we're thinking about the the pleasure of the right. act. Right. Right. And I won't. I won't even say we're thinking about it. We're just experiencing the pleasure of the act. Right. And that's the only way that you can do that. You got to be able to let go and experience things. And that's your responsibility. That not, yeah. it's not some, um, just, you're not some fucking no. Rubik's cube that some guy no. has to figure out. You shouldn't, and you shouldn't be, have to do that. Y'all should be enjoying yeah. each other. No, and enjoying that's the experience. too much work. That's too much work for anybody. You know, I get irritated when, <laughs> you know, men do that, you know, so, cause some men do that too. Hold on. I have a guest here. Um, I don't like thinking about shit when it's time to have sex, man. Right, but you know, like I said, when uh, when women learn to just be free in bed, right, those moments will come a lot quicker, a lot more, and you the experience of sex and 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 that that spiritual connection that you're looking for from that this. person will happen. Right. The reason why it's not happening is because you're in your head too much. And stop thinking that you some goddamn Rubik's cube that guys have to figure out. If right. You don't want to have. You... If you don't want to have a nut, that's on you. Right. <laughs> you you're going to person... deprive yourself of a nut because you're trying to, you know, get somebody to figure out how to make you come. Get the hell out of here. Come yeah, it on. takes away from the whole experience. Yeah. And as you get older, you should you. you you almost should know better if you don't want if if you I would say if you over 40, 35, <laughs> by now you should there's a lot of things you should know about your body and how to get, you know, that connection and that bond, sexual bond with somebody to where it heightens your sexual experience. Can you put that comment like on? Like I screen? said, I hear this a lot from my girlfriends and I, you know, it made me like why why are women not getting there? Why why is it hard for women to 
have an orgasm these days? What is what is the problem? Can you put that on the screen there where it says some women can't have an orgasm while having vaginal sex? Okay. Uh, one who's... user said, uh, uh, somebody said one aspect of it that I found hard was the touching without penetration. He's talking about, uh, or the person is talking about. Um, no, not, the... not that one. The one yeah. that says some women can't have an orgasm. I just wanted to read that one because I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, some women can't have an orgasm while having vaginal sex. Click on that so it can come on the screen. Okay. Whose I think it's fault because most that? women don't know how to be sexual, free sexually with themselves. Whose responsibility is it to have an orgasm? It's hers. It's his. Hers or his? It's both. I mean, you you you're 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 getting with that person right. in order. Let, to let me make it personal. That, let me make it or personal. Or you just getting with that person. To, yeah. Let me make it personal. What's well, mine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you, whose responsibility yes. is it to for you to have an orgasm? It became mine, you know, in the last probably two three years. It was always yours. Mm -hmm. but I didn't <laughs> so, know that right but that's my point I didn't it's know that because you gotta remember a lot of us are not taught that Mark exactly. a lot of women are not taught that that's what that their their orgasm and their sexual connection to a man is is belongs to them yeah also yeah some of said, us still you know somebody said that people are suffering from sexual trauma that's another um discussion yeah. because that yeah that, that is true, but that's a that brings a whole other element into the discussion. I'm talking about people that never were sexually abused or any of that stuff like that. Because then if you mm -hmm. introduce that, then we're going to go into a, a whole other atmosphere. So let's assume in this yeah. conversation that we're talking about two healthy people who haven't been abused and sexually assaulted mm -hmm. in the past just enjoying each other sexually. For the sake right. of this conversation, I think we should stick with that because that is actually true. I don't want to dismiss mm -hmm. that, but that's yeah. a, that's, that brings it to a whole other level of discussion that I think we could do a whole show on. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But I, I would employ that, you know, I would like to, to um, also say that as you, you know, I have this for, I have a few friends of mine, you know, as women get older, when you go, you know, and I would like to tell all women this, do not let them take your ovaries. The reason for that is very important. As we have those, you know, women problems or whatever, as we get older and we stop having children or whatever, do not let them take your ovaries. That's very important to your sexual um needs later on trust me because i know women that let that happen and they had a choice but they were trying to do a whole full thing and it fucked up their sexual experience from then on they could never right it messes with yes exactly they could never come no matter how much sex they had they never came again after that that's horrible so that's one thing I want to put out there. That's horrible. Just in case unless, some women yeah, don't know unless, that. Yeah. Horrible, horrible, mm -hmm. horrible. Right. But yeah. Right, I guess I can stay. And I'm, 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 I'm I am just not sleepy women. for some reason. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I need you here. I'm in a lot of groups with women, and you'd be surprised how many of them say they never. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, believe me, there are more women that have not. And probably the reason why they haven't is because of them more than they realize. Get out of your head. Do they masturbate? I don't. I don't like it. I don't want to play with me. Well, we're not talking about you because I'm assuming you're not in that demographic that never had an orgasm. So... What you do is irrelevant. I'm talking about the people that never had an orgasm. Do they masturbate, those women? I'm asking right. that face. It says Facebook I user, I guess, because most of the comments is right. coming from Facebook. Yeah, no, I can't tell who's saying it. So, you know, if, if you're saying something, we can only see Facebook user. 
while we're online. You're looking at StreamYard, and it usually, um, mm-hmm. if you want to be identified, comment. Well, no, I, you know what? No, if you're on Facebook, just comment on Facebook. It's no problem. But um, also, if you want to comment on YouTube, you can do that as well because we can see your name when it comes through. If you want right. to, but if not, you can stay on Facebook. It doesn't matter. Right. But yeah, that's, I know. I know, um, I know Madi is no. probably like, "What the hell is this dude doing up?" Because I was supposed to be asleep, <laughs> and I, I I just can't go to sleep. I got in bed, and I just could not go to sleep. Yeah, I was, with, I was hanging with I, her today, as you saw. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll I'll speak on that later because you know I'm yeah. on the air. Yeah, <laughs> but I loved it. But yeah, I think um. But yeah, you got to get out of your head and keep in mind, I'm not trivializing sexual assault because I don't think we should introduce that in this discussion now. mm -hmm. That's another story. But it minus sexual assault or any traumatic sexual experience like being raped or Mm -hmm. sexually assaulted, uh, you know, minus that. um, Mm -hmm. I think that if you haven't had that, you just inside of your own head. You have to have some fun time with yourself so you can get used to not doing that. Right. And so maybe when you get with somebody, you'll be able to let go. Maybe. And I'm not saying be a, you yeah. know, you don't have to be a and, maniac and that makes with sense. it, but a, every you once know, in a while. You, right. You know, every once in a while. Right. You know. And one, and why aren't, why are you not letting go? Because that's Control. another thing. Someone's scared to let go in sex. They, they're really scared to let go. And doesn't Adding that naturally translate to relationships? Andrea to this mm-hmm. Doesn't that translate hey, to Andrea. relationships? Um, well, I mean, it would probably have something, a lot to do with the relationship, period, because it has to start there, you know, because how can you have sex with somebody that you're with and still not connect to them in bed? Why are you with them? Hello? Can you hear me? It's all a part of the package, right? I can I can hear you. Is, okay. that, is that Dre? Yeah. Andrea, hey, yeah. What's up? What's up? Hey, hey. What's going on, guys? Cool. You sound like you're in a hallway though. <laughs> I can hear you. Let me get yeah. a little closer because I think my internet is the reason why. Some no, of no, stuff it has I nothing can't. to do with you because I can hear you. I don't think so. Time. I think because you didn't have problems. No, I can't home. hear Andrea. Oh, you can't hear her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear let her. Me go out she sounds, sounds kind of airy. Yeah, let me come back in. Are you talking about me? Yeah. And how I talk? No, not, not how you talk, how you sound. <laughs> <in> you. <laughs> you sound airy. Like yeah, in the I, way. I'm not having I'm not having a lot of luck here with with the with the um audio. I don't think. Mm. Are you on a, a mic or are you on a speaker or something? Um, just on the speaker. Ah, that's why. That explains it. So everything um, that's going on around you can hear. Is that what you're saying? Mm-mm, I can hear yeah, you. Yes, like background, but I can hear you. That's about as good as it's going to get. I can hear you. I can hear you, Andrea. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, um, they were just saying on something I was watching uh, that there are multiple types of vaginal orgasm, and a lot of people only okay. are aware of the intense building, intense building, intense building, and then kind of like crescendo. Mm-hmm. And there are several others. Okay. So these people who are saying that they've never mm-hmm. had them, they could have possibly had them, you know, but they only have in their mind one kind. Because, of course, mm-hmm. there's a wave. <laughs> you know, you kind of get this wave kind of feeling. Um, but right. it doesn't necessarily have to be that build, 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 and then boom, you know. Right. All yeah. of them are not going to be like that. So no, that mean that and they're not. Out. I've had I've had different ones too. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that you know most women just are not familiar with their own bodies, and right. um, not to say that you know there are not women who've never had vaginal orgasm. Of course, 
Mm-hmm. But I think that is not nearly as many as who might think that they've not had it. If you're feeling okay. really good, then that mm-hmm. might be your orgasm. Right. Okay. I mean, because why are you I feel having, that. you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I agree. You might with be that. having a great time without that, you mm-hmm. know, you know, head spinning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Feeling right. like you yeah. can start weeping at any moment or whatever. You know, you mm-hmm. may not have that. That might not be your experience. Everybody's experience is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the the user that said, you know, they're in a lot of groups where women, are, you know, a lot of women, you'd be surprised, don't have, have never had an orgasm. Yeah. You know, we were just talking about that, that, that is a lot of times when I knew with me, you know, it wasn't, I, I didn't think that I was in control of that, which is why I wasn't having them because I didn't think I was in control of it. I thought something was wrong with me because I enjoyed sex, but it wasn't like, you know, mind blowing, you know, like that. But it doesn't um, always have to be that either. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, you could. Okay, so what did you enjoy about it when you didn't think you were having an orgasm? Um, it became a thing that was just the connection. You know, or? I think the connection was off. You know, because oh. sometimes you can have sex with someone and it becomes mundane. It just becomes something that, you know, that you're doing, you know? So I think that my connection with that person just wasn't there to where I felt, you know, in bed that I could connect to them like that. And oh. it's crazy because it took a, it took a relationship. It took a, re- it took a, a relationship that was a friendship for me to have that experience with a friend. It wasn't even somebody that was my man. Maybe because you trusted that person. That's exactly mm-hmm. what it is. It, it, you know, that's it is all why ties. you felt to relax and to just go with the flow, no pun intended. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it, it felt one. pressured, you know, when I was when I was with someone, and it was like that because it was always about them. You know, it wasn't really about me. It was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there, but it, you know, mm-mm. but when but I got with jackhammer in a way, huh? <laughs> right. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, gosh. slow the fuck down. First of all, slow the fuck down, and you know, don't forget I'm here. You know, but um, Ooh, that sounds when I got with this friend, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh and see he would have been above me sorry <laughs> were you that's very right. young at the time were you very that, young at the time that sounds so hot yes. doesn't it yes you know what I think when you're younger um, mm-hmm. you might accept certain things like now you know at the age mm-hmm. where you know over 40 over 45 yeah surely mm-hmm. over 40 over 45 you're not accepting anything that's not pleasure. It's like, you know, no, no, please, no, just leave me alone. No. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not even worth my time if no. I'm not in it, if I'm not no. included now. No. You no. know, and I know right away whether it's not, is going to be, you know, or not. And yeah. Yeah. But it's, it just, you know, that was just a, something that I always wondered about. Like, how did I get that with a friend? And not with someone that was with me for a couple of years, you know, that I had relationships with you didn't care. It actually makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. It actually makes perfect sense, actually. Really? Yeah. Please tell me. (laughs) Well, you already, you already, you already, she already said it. You were more comfortable to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And probably with the, you, you, we said, we had this discussion before, like, just because a person loves you, that don't mean they like you. Oh, right. Yeah, in there, in there. I mean, I, 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 I'm mm-hmm. an expert on, I'm an expert on that subject. People can't stand my fucking ass, but they love me. Hilarious. They love me to death, but they Hilarious. can't stand me. Because they don't, oh. they, they don't, they don't, 
get me. They don't understand how I think. They don't understand why I do the things that I do. They res- right. they kind of respect it because I'm I'm passionate about it. They respect the passion, but they don't really understand it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I get that a lot. And passion is another thing too. You know, passion in bed is very important, folks. I think it is. I you know, because passion with the person you're with is, is important mm-hmm. because not everybody wants, yeah. you know, the same thing, you know, and you have to mm-hmm. be able to communicate that and you have to, and communication is two ways. It's a two way street. You right. know, it's not just what you're saying. It's also that the person is hearing you and, and, and absorbing okay. what you're saying, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Passion is important, but you know, some people just want something else. They don't necessarily want, you know, grand passion. Some people want romance. They want, you know, gentleness. They want, you know, soft kisses. They want, they want, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's different. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we're different at different times. Sometimes we want to be like, woo, and, you know, spinning from stuff. And then other times we might want to be, you know, gentle and sweet. And <laughs> Yeah, you got to oh, read yeah. the room. Gotta mm-hmm. read the room, yeah. Gotta read the room. Every everything is not a one size fits all. That's Part true. The pun. Part the pun. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of puns that could go on in this discussion, indeed. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even trying that. with that one. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even trying, and it just came out. Trust me, I get it. It was a good one. It was a good one. We we enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, that was just, a, you know, one of those subjects where I, you know, I, I always wondered about that, you know, it's just one of those things, what, how did it take me that long, but I was just in my head a lot, you know, mm-hmm. I was trying to get there instead of just enjoying the journey of, of that person or being with that person, you know, because right. sometimes when you hear the word sex, you know, it's something to do and not to enjoy. Right. And to do it sometimes is hard for people. Mm-hmm. You know, to do it and enjoy it, you know, some people don't make the correlation between that, you know, because sex is something that you do or something's yeah. being done to you or you're doing to someone else. Mm-hmm. But when I, when I figured it out, oh yeah, I'm, you know, you're good, girl. You're good. <laughs> she 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 leveled up. There it is. The glow up, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I grew up. The level I hear up. you. I'm grown now. I'm grown now. Never too late. And you know what I find too also in your, you know, when you get your um when you're in your forties. It's, I don't know what it is. It's something that clicks for women. Is it, Am I right about that, lady? That um, uh, after 40, it seems like you get an, another wind. Well, I think, you know, you're, you're starting to really understand yourself and come mm-hmm. to acceptance of who you are. And I think when you right. do that and you really are digging on you, mm-hmm. it makes it so much easier to really get into someone else. It makes it so much That's easier true. to really enjoy and be pleasured mm-hmm. and, and, and pleasure another person. It, right, because you're confident. Your level. confidence is there. Mm-hmm. The confidence is there, but even more than that, you know, just mm-hmm. the acceptance of who you are. Oh, man, I can't hear y'all for some reason. I don't right. know why. Yo, that's Minister. That's the woo. Mr. Dow. Oh that yeah, he went out. he'll be back. Yeah, that that sounded okay. like him. Yeah, that was him. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Sex He's drive a got insane. Check out that comment. Sex drive got insane after I turned forty. <laughs> yeah, I agree. My sex drive was dip- what, totally I would different. Imagine, after I would imagine it would be like it would be okay. kind of weird for a guy to say that. Yeah, that would be that yeah, would when, be curious. When I was 18, I really wasn't feeling the sex, but when I hit 40, oh damn. Yeah, that would be interesting. 
So so men, it's not like that with men. Men always have a sex, high sex drive. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying when you're in that age, like when you hit past puberty, um, the wind blows and that's enough. Yeah, I mean, I remember having to have the conversation okay. with my with my son. You know, listen, you're mm -hmm. gonna have these situations, and they're not always gonna occur at the time that makes sense to you. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? You're gonna be thinking, well, yeah. why now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <You> know? Translation. <laughs> why at this time? You're gonna be hard for no damn reason. For no damn reason. That is crazy. Or maybe a reason. <laughs> but an inappropriate time. In an inappropriate time. Yeah. 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 Like that badass teacher. <laughs> badass <laughs> teacher writing on the chalkboard that turned around at the wrong time. Yeah, exactly. Is that easy? What? Oh, please. <laughs> please. Bill Burr said it best. He said, you know what? He said, having a dick is like uh, having a motivational coach between your legs. It's like everything is, yeah, come on. Yeah, no problem. We can do it. <laughs> right. He said, if, if your dick was a third base coach, it'd be waving everybody home. Go on. Go for it. You can do it. Right. Hi. <laughs> I see someone there. Hi, Nika. Nika and uh, Brother Dawood, uh, Mah Mr. Muhammad, you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Oh, there uh, yes, I'm um, sorry. I'm just you getting your text. This? Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mr. Muhammad, what can you add yes. to this? Um, so I heard y'all talking about a lot of different things. What are we talking about right now? Right now we're talking about... We're talking about... about... <laughs> right now no, we're talking Mark. about um, how, like, sex drive, like, for men and for women. That's what we was dealing with, like the age in which your sex drive and your hormones are off the charts. Oh, well, you know, it's very interesting because um, I remember when I was going through uh, a bad time with the, with the you know, my last ex that, that I ended up um, getting out of the situation with. And she had moved out on me by surprise. So I was messed up and I was kind of like hanging on the block for the first time in years. This is like, this is in 2014. So I was hanging on the block. And um, I had a, I had a street friend, and all of these young dudes would come up to him, and the the most common conversation is who got the best pills, and I at first I thought they was talking about um you know what I'm saying like stimulants or whatever, but what they was mm -hmm. talking about was dick pills, and these dudes were in their thirties, forties, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I don't know what happened between the last generation and this generation. But what I will say to you is that these young brothers are losing their ability to get hard and have sex at a lot younger age than they've ever had. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. But I do know that. And I had a whole bunch of um, holistic health, uh, health gurus that were women that I knew. And I said to them, I said, listen, I said, this is going to sound inappropriate, but I got to say it to you. If, in fact, you come up with some kind of natural that it doesn't hurt you, for lack of a better word, Viagra type dick pill, you're going to make a killing. Because 90% of these niggas out here is not trying to get healthy and be do the Dr. Sabi diet or whatever. They basically trying to get hard no matter what. And if you could come up with a natural, um, if you come up with a natural solution to this problem, you're going to make a killing in the hood. Of course, you know, they didn't want to do it. They still wanted to sell their freaking colon cleanse and all this other stuff. But it just goes to show you that a lot of men, even though they're not talking about it, they are really, you know, I, I agree with y'all. You do get to a certain point when you're younger and, and your sex drive kicks in and your, your testosterone kicks in. But you got to think a lot of these dudes who are hanging on these streets and drinking beer every day and alcohol yeah. every day and not really mm -hmm. taking care of themselves, they don't mm -hmm. have the same level of testosterone that they should. And so... Mm -hmm. um, what I'm saying is that that's a physical thing. But what I learned from myself also is this. We can talk about sex drive all you want to. But if you meet as a man, I just speak for men. If you meet with a woman, you meet a woman and y'all are not compatible 
and she doesn't turn you on either visually, um, verbally, or emotionally, there's mm -hmm. very few of us who can still have sex with you and be successful and bring you to orgasm and have sex for, let's just say 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is you think is, is a decent amount of time. Because what I learned is that, is that and you know, they, they, you got your exceptions, you got those dudes out there and they play as a naked, they could, they could screw anything. But the majority of us as men that are competent in ourselves, we can say that we can hit anything, but if we don't have a real connection with you and you don't attract us, we only gonna last for like five minutes. And I, I challenge any man to prove me wrong. You know what I'm saying? You got to have some kind of attraction to this woman. She has to turn you on in some way, shape, or form. Your body will literally shut down and try to, the quickest way to come out of that. <laughs> and I do, when I say come, I don't mean C-O-M-E. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when we talk about, <laughs> we talk, when we talk about sex drive, I'm not blaming this on the sisters because I know that's a big thing with the feminism out there. They're talking about, oh, niggas out there ain't bringing us to orgasm. I never had no orgasm, blah, blah, blah. But what I will say to you is that you have a responsibility in that too. If that man is not attracted to you in any way, shape, or form, I used to call it the got milk effect. Remember they used to have those got milk t-shirt uh, um, um, commercials where it'd just be a dude in a t-shirt or a woman in a t-shirt with a milk mustache? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just think that that's, that's what a lot of us think sex is, is you show up in your goddamn t-shirt and a dude is supposed to be super excited every time you do. And if he sees you in that seat t-shirt five or six times, you may want to put on some stockings and heels or something <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? And likewise, yeah. as a man, I know, I know that us as men, you know what I'm saying? If you got a pot belly, you should work on that. You should work on your body. I do my push-ups and things like that because I know if I'm demanding for you to look sexy, then you should look sexy for me. But I think that when we talk about sex drive, we tend to we tend to really not look at the deeper factors and why a person has a sex drive or not. And I would say some of them are physical. And then there's a lot of them that really is mental. And the last thing I'll say is this. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of player friends. And one of my, my main player friends, like this is a dude that has so many side chicks, he's got a queen bee side chick over the other side chicks. <laughs> and um, so he told me and he said to me a long time ago, he said, listen, bro. He said, for me to have a long-term relationship with any woman, we have to continue to keep the excitement going through our imagination. He said, a man's um, sexual uh, vitality and proficiency is always dependent on their imagination. And this is what players don't tell you. He said, so if you can get excited about a woman, there's not much you can't do. But if you don't get excited and you go into that situation thinking that you're just going to allow your, for lack of a better word, your penis to do the talking, you got a good chance of failure. And I never really thought about that. Mm -hmm. He said, so, you know, if you and your lady or, or, or some lady is getting dry between y'all, y'all got to spice it up by have her send you a body pic. You know what I'm saying? Y'all may talk dirty during the day. But I think that this sex drive conversation is deeper than just hormones and how somebody looks it, it, it it's much deeper than that because the older you get the more you have to work to keep yourself excited about somebody and that's what yeah. i've learned in my lifetime yeah hmm. mic drop so and well and well I'm, I'm still on that then how do you how, what what do you suggest to the viewers in in keeping that going your sex drive going or your bond and your connection to that person, and Andrea, you because uh, I know you've been married. How do you how do you go about keeping that um, going to where you know you're with that person, and you're you're you still got eyes for that person. You still they still turn you on. Well, I well one of the By things is I think you have to, well, one of the things is I think you have to like them. Yeah. Like really genuinely mm -hmm. like who, who you're with. Um, that mm -hmm. helps a lot. Um, because even when you. That's a radical thought. Eat, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. You have to like them. You have to be, you know, willing to come. I don't like, you know, I'm not a people person. I, you know, I know that's hard to understand mm -hmm. because I'm a nurse or whatever, but I'm not a people person. I really literally, uh, I'm, a, I'm very introverted. And um, I don't like a lot of energy, you know, a lot of people okay. around. So if I can be comfortable 
with that person and spend the whole day with them and not feel like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't take it, then that's good. That's or, a really good thing. You know, yeah, that makes it easier true. for me to always kind of look at them and think to myself, you're pretty cute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's something about you that I'm really digging. I'm really feeling you. You know, right. um, because it doesn't happen that often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I, I don't so like true. I don't like a lot of people. <laughs> that is so true, though. I'm very honest. Yeah, and I think you know the pattern, something. right? You know, somebody pattern. said, "What color stockings?" That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> uh, um, you know, me the myself, pattern, I like though, white. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! White lace stockings. I like stockings. Yeah. Period. Whether they white, black, green, in between. <laughs> um. But you notice the pattern that mm-hmm. it's all mental. If they're not, right. if they're not, if they're not connected mentally, then the physical is just irrelevant at that point. Right. right. So I guess so that tantric mentally, thing that people mentally. keep talking about is what I said. Mm-hmm. It's like it's mental, emotional, spiritual, like that. Uh-huh. So that connection it, mm-hmm. and the the physicality is just the extension of that. Right. Because that's right. what it all boils down to. It's like you're not going to get that experience with somebody that you're not feeling. Right. Right. There has to be something like what you were saying, Duo. Mm-hmm. Has to be and, something. And you know, to, uh, you to know add what, to what you're me... saying, bro. Mm-hmm. To add to what you're saying, just real quick, sis. To add to what you're saying, no, like somebody talked about the the gas station pills in um in the mm-hmm. chat room, and I think that the only reason why you got to use that. Is, is because you don't have a connection with the person. Because when I got a connection with the person, and I, I'm gonna try not to be as graphic as I can, but I already know they know mine, I know theirs. We know what we need to do to get each other off. And if this connection versus excitement, oh my God. Connection um, times excitement is oh my God. It's one thing if we got connection. It's another thing where there's a part of you that I think of all the time. I'm just like, damn, she got a fat. You know what I'm saying? Or what it is. <laughs> like, like that excitement is gonna. I don't need no pill if I got that kind of excitement. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's let's, no let's expand no, no, it. No, let's no, expand let me say it. something to that because the pills yeah. sometime, you know, it's more of a medical issue with that with certain men. Let me just put that out there. Because some men need that in order to get up because of medical issues such as diabetes. Um, there's there's Heart reasons disease. why a lot of men, you know, have that problem. And so I know a few people that I know, you know, buy them because of that reason, not because they're not attracted or they're not, you know, connecting to their woman. It's just they can't perform no matter what without the pill because of medical reasons. Right, right, but sis, there, there's mucho more people who use those pills and they don't have medical mm-hmm. conditions. Mucho more. Okay. That's why it's a billion dollar right. industry. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But I was going to say, like, if you ex- just expand that outside of the realm of sex, it's like most of the stuff that, especially in American culture, that people engage in, they have to artificially put themselves in a certain position, even to party. Like, okay. like right. you can't just go out and, and just have a good time listening to music. You got to get high. You got to get drugged up. You got to do it. It's all this mm-hmm. artificial means to achieve this euphoria that everybody's trying to get to. Yeah, I call, ne- it, I I call it the perpetual, the perpetual orgasm machine that everybody mm-hmm. wants to get hooked hmm. up to. Yeah. I mean, that drunken love thing. I've never been drunk, never wanted to make love whilst I was drunk or he was drunk. I don't get that. Maybe that's just not my thing, but I don't get that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go with... Uh, anyway, I'm going to be quiet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have done like if I when I was drinking back in the day, and it was amazing. Uh-huh. But, you know, I, if I, I party, clean, so I can't do that no more. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that, that was your thing. You know, that, like every what turn you know different things turn people on you know or or makes them more you know their their sexual sexual um 
escapade is more heightened, and I understand that. It's just, you know, if you're drunk, how, how does... But I guess so. I know I can speak for the partying thing. I never was really into clubs and parties, and the only time that I would enjoy them is when I went with a group of people where we can kind of entertain ourselves. So if I had, like, Mm-hmm. Girl, the group, the group that I was hanging out with, then I didn't have to worry about asking anybody to dance because I had girls that I can dance with in our crew. So okay. I always had a good time. It was I never went there like trying to search for anything, and I also mm-hmm. don't like the artificial celebration. It's like if I'm, let's say, I have a release party for a, a movie I did or something like that's a celebration, right? For me. You know, okay. but just to be going out, just to go out, I never liked it. Never liked clubs. Never liked a whole lot of loud music because I like having conversations and try having yeah. a conversation in a club. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. You yeah. know, you like you're, screaming you're in somebody's ear. Like, yeah. I'm trying to talk to you. How? Me. How am I even able to talk <laughs> to you in a club? So it just, it's just not right. my scene. Not my mm-hmm. scene at all. And you and and then and it's really dangerous. It's it's really annoying when you have somebody that don't want to ho- holler over the music when you're in the club, but they want to get up get up on you and get all in your ear that you right. just met to say something to you. That's right. so annoying. Like, okay, you're a little too close, and I just met you. I always prefer lounges, I, and and I don't even want no live music at the lounge. Just a place where we can go and sit down and have a conversation. I love that. Yeah, I love that. That's what me and me and Marty had today. You party animal, Mark. Yeah, I'm just a wild and My crazy goodness, guy. Like wild and crazy. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, he gets and wild and crazy. Me and, Ma- me and Marty went to brunch, and that's the type of you know hanging out I like to do. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that um pretty much um answers my questions with that, you know, or, you know, just wanted to kind of bring that subject out because I know a lot of women that are, you know, and maybe a lot of men too, but I know a lot of women that, that, um, don't have those orgasms and don't have those moments with someone because they're not connecting just like I wasn't connecting. And there's a reason for that. You have to be in control of your body you have to be in control of your mind and where it goes when you're engaging with that person you can't let your mind go way too far over there you have to stay in the moment and these are things that i learned literally within probably the last five years of my life wow yes he's a late bloomer i'm so late but i'm i'm here guys I made it. I hear you. I hear you, girl. I hear you. Better yeah. late than I never. Hey, if, mm-hmm. if there's any consolation, I'm a late bloomer too. You could just look at me and tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like where have this information been all my life? Why didn't I know this? You know, and I really feel bad, but it makes me want to have those conversations with my children, you know, to where they don't have to, that they understand that it's more to sex than just, you know, there's it, it, more to it. And, you know, you have to make sure that both of you are in control of what you're doing there and that you're connecting with somebody that you that you know you're going to be attracted to for the rest of your life if you decide to stay there, you know? Or- you two of you are both out of control, and that's good too. That that's a that's a beautiful point that you brought up though, which is talk to your children. And mm-hmm. what I've noticed is, is me myself, I've noticed that a lot of men don't talk to their sons about sex. Um yep. a lot of men that talk, no. talk to their sons about sex. My my my, my son's of, father didn't talk to them about sex, and my mother you know, the only thing she taught us was, you know, close your legs and until you get married. Right, right. So I have, um, it's well known, I have three children by um, one ex, and then I have two children by the other ex. And the other two children I have are too young to even be in this discussion. But my older three children, the youngest I have is 19. 
and their mother mm -hmm. uh, came from the Catholic Church before she came into Islam. So you know what that pretty much means. It's very, very conservative, very strict, very kind of bland and plain. So I am the mm -hmm. one that had to have a conversation with all three of them about sex. And okay, um, and talking that must have been fun. Talking to, um, you know what, bro? It, it is actually, it is because if you see the thing is is as, as, to be a good parent, you have to, you really have to navigate the fine line between being a friend and a father, a friend and a mother, because there's a mm -hmm. fine line between both. And sometimes yeah, you got to navigate on the friend side, and then sometimes you got to navigate on the fa the father slash mother side. Some people right. who do the, the, the people who do the worst jobs, are, I think people who pick a side and stay on that side, either you just want to be your children's friend or you just want to be your children's parent. And both sides have neg mm -hmm. negative sides to them because a child sometimes needs you as a friend and sometimes they need you as mm -hmm. a parent. And mm -hmm. if you establish a certain level of respect with them, you can navigate between the two without them looking at you as a hypocrite. But if you mm -hmm. only, you've been a friend all of your childhood and then all of a sudden you want to be a father, they're going to be like, man, nigga, get out of here with that. Or if you've been super strict all their childhood and now you want to be their friend, they'd be like, oh, well, we're afraid of you. We, we ain't trying to come to you. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is that, is that with, with men, I will fall, at least me, for me and Holliff's generation, I can only speak for us that, and I, I'm pretty sure he would agree with me, none of the older men told us anything about sex. All right. they said was trial and error. Gotta... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So ah. we are the generation. Yeah, we're the generation who actually tried to. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's loud. Yeah. I, I actually live right across the street from an ambulance, so I can't talk. But anyway, um, we are the generation that are, are fixing that. I think because I know that I've spoken to a yeah. lot of young men, not only just, you know, being a captain in the Nation of Islam and a, a lieutenant, as well as being a minister. I've spoken to a lot of young men about sex, what happens when you do this, you know, what happens when you crap out early, all of that stuff, because nobody told me okay. nothing. And like Holly yeah. said, you had to learn about problems. And I feel and the so same imagine. way. I feel the same way. You know, I think right. that a lot of, I, I, and I see a lot of things, even on my timeline of young girls that are talking about, you know, certain experiences that they're having and, you know, well, he can't please me and he can't do this. It's always about what he can't do for her sexually. Yes. And yes. I'm like, baby girl, if yes. you knew that you were in control of that, you wouldn't say that. Right, right. And it's a tell. If you mm -hmm. jump on social media and all you're talking about is is people can't satisfy me, you're you're telling the world something. You yep. know what I'm saying? And so, and that's a big thing to me that I be telling my my daughters and all of the young women that in my in my um that listen to my voice. I'm like, listen, you got to be very careful what you tell the world when you decide to speak on social media, because number one, you have people that don't like you, but number three, more importantly, you could have the man of your dreams listening to what you're saying, mm -hmm. and you turn them off with some dumb shit you're talking. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that that, applies to, that pretty much applies to all of us, but, but by and large, what I wanted to say was is that I just think that our generation, if you're in your 40s or 50s, our parents really didn't talk to us about sex, so we made a lot of mistakes, and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that yes. we all kind of correct that. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 it, and, it's, and it's important that we correct that. Because we're, you know, our gener our children's generation is important that 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 they understand a lot more than we did. I have to be more right. open with my kids, especially in while they're in their twenties. My daughter just turned thirty one. Um, oh wow! I have to be more open about you know what they understand about sex and relationships and connecting to someone. You know, and it's not just about that, you know, because I've had moments when they were young. You know, you go through those little moments where your kid's doing something where, you know, they're mm -hmm. playing outside, playing house or whatever and don't know what house really is, you know, and um, right. they do too much. You know, I've had those discussions where I've had to say something, but I now that they're older. Yeah, I we need to have a conversation because y'all need to know what I know now. Right. I mean, at the very least, you turning your children on a world that has STDs, 
You turn your children on a world that um, has multiple pregnancies. And if they, you know, if you didn't say anything to them and they either get an STD or they get an early pregnancy, you got to take some responsibility for that. Because you didn't, you right. didn't, you didn't prepare them for it. And, you know, right. in some cases, even if you tell them about it, they're still going to do whatever the hell they want to. But at least you said something. Yeah. I have to make sure that they're good. You know, I don't want nobody right. talk, out there talking about my kids don't know what they're doing in bed. <laughs> 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 I don't want that. No mother wants that. Right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought about it. You know, I, 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 cause I've seen how, how girls talk bad about men. So I, of course, my sons, I don't want that. You know, my daughter, I don't want that, want her to be that timid girl in bed and she don't know what she's doing. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I, so yeah, I, I feel the need to have to have that conversation sometimes. And yeah. I do, you know, my, my kids are very open now. They'll come and talk to me about stuff and I'm, I, I have to be openly real. I can't right. sugarcoat it like my parents did me because, mm -hmm. you know, right. I didn't get no instructions on that part. None. Right. You know, I was right. my, my my experiences was trial and error. And that's probably why my sexual experiences wasn't nothing that I could actually remember right now and say, oh, that was great until I was in my 40s. That's crazy. Hmm. Well, let me, let me ask everybody on the panel this: mm -hmm. How was your, how was your your virgin experience? How was your first time? Ooh. Hmm. I'm gonna go first. Mine last time. Uh, go ahead. I'll let somebody yeah. else go first. Um, I married him uh, because okay. I thought ooh 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 meant you know you were supposed to get married. Um, you know, I had an orgasm and I thought, oh, I'm supposed to marry this person because this must be love. Um, right. Not necessarily. Uh, I, I mean, I did love him, but, you know, I was really young. I was, I was, um, 18 when I got married, um, uh, and mm -hmm. I lost my virginity. He was my, you know, first everything until I was 31. That was the only person I'd known in that way. So, um... Okay. It was uh it wasn't a bad experience. It was actually really lovely. You know, it was a really good experience mm -hmm. because he was he was, you know, wow. He was someone that I knew. I feel like um, and and like I said, you know, we had been in a relationship and we wound up getting married not that long after. And um mm -hmm. so it was it wasn't a bad experience. I've, I I think I'm very fortunate in that respect because I've I've heard a lot of horror stories. Unfortunately. Okay. Mark. Hmm. Um. It was with an older woman. How and it was. I've heard that um, a lot from from young men. I was. Wait, she was like twenty years older than me. Wow. Uh, how old were you? Um, 18? 18, 19, something like that. Wow, bro. Wow. Yeah. So she and was, she like was your first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's why I had a thing for older women. Because it was like she was very comfortable with herself. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't this hard to get stuff that you would play with young girls because she was experienced so it's like okay my entry into it was more like that it's like hmm. she was really com it was really comfortable like I didn't feel like like um because like usually when you're dealing with a girl that doesn't have any experience and she's kind of relying on you to do everything. It's like, you know, right. but right. with her, it was like the opposite. It was like, it wasn't, it didn't feel like any pressure. It just felt natural. It felt like organic. Hmm. That's the best way I could describe it. Hmm. 
And she oh. fucked my head. She did something that fucked me up, man. Well, not in a bad way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was something I never experienced before. Um, damn, how, how explicit can we get? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, we, got, we got grown folks on here, right? Yeah, we're yep. in the fashion. <laughs> It got too hot for her. Did she get singed? Oh, what happened? Where she she got cut? What happened? Oh damn! I knocked her off. You see what you see what happened? Damn! But maybe maybe I better hold back on what I was about I to say. I think you might have to. <laughs> she got it was too hot for her own live stream. Hmm. No, I, well, I guess I, I got to go kind of curious. What'd you say, Dre? I'm kind of curious because I'm just wondering. I know I saw uh, this this show one day I was watching uh, and they were gossiping about somebody and said that, oh, I think it was, um, uh, what's his name, Marvin Gaye. And they were saying that he was in a relationship with an older woman, interestingly enough, and he wasn't really into her, but she was like really, really super sexually experienced Mm -hmm. and that she did something, which, you know, nobody can say what that something was. That just blew his mind. So I'm just wondering, <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> I, I can tell you what it binds is. I'm what waiting for Latasha to get back. Because then she's going to be mad at me if I yeah, see it without true. her being on You're the right. line. You're right. She will. She will. That's true. Like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh, there she is. is if she? any of y'all, well, she's frozen, it looks like. Oh, I, I see, see her, her picture. On. She's there. She. Is. Okay, there she hey, is. Gosh. Hey, Hey. Have, have, have any of you ever heard of the term "infinity blowjob"? No, <laughs> no sir. I have not. Oh, somebody came on and is like, "Hey, I came in at the right time." <laughs> infinity blowjob. What the <laughs> do tell? Yeah, I, I would love to have more details about this. This is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. What's an infinity blowjob? Meaning, like you don't do anything else other than blow? Um, no, it's it's it's. Oh God, this is funny. Let me let me get myself together before I. T- it's hilarious. It's when the it's when the girl is going down. Like, all right, she goes down on you until you fall asleep, and when you wake up in the morning, she's still going down on you. So she so puts it's you like asleep? so it's like it was going on infinity. I'm it was an infinity blowjob. Yeah, that's what they call it. So if you ever hear that term, you know where it came from. And if, uh, and keep in mind, I mean, she probably, that's a long ass time to be second dick. Though. No, it only it's seems a like a long that. time. It only seems like a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, if she puts him to sleep, she goes to sleep, but she just wakes up before he does. There you go. But it feels yeah. like and, it and never finishes. ended. Yeah. Oh, um, that's why they call it an infinity blowjob. Because I was going to say, how, how in the world now is imagine, that? Imagine getting that at 18. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's hilarious. God, I hope my son has never gotten that. Yeah, that's that's you better be strong. No, okay. You better be strong for that one. Wow. You better be strong. You'd be like, what the yeah. hell was that? Wow. Yeah, I hope my son ain't got that. Lord knows he that a whole me, bunch of shit. My first sexual experience went it went it was painful. It was quick. It was painful, and it was quick. <laughs> and wow, my daughter man. came. My daughter came out of it. I didn't even know he did. He knew I was pregnant and everything. And told me, yeah, you you know you're pregnant. I said, no, I'm not. And mm. that wasn't even five minutes, you know, because I just didn't know, you know. I'm like, it couldn't have been, mm. you know. Wow. But yeah, it was very painful. Yeah, they must have been young. That was back when you thought time actually meant something when it came to sex. I was, I was eighteen. I just, you know, wait a I minute, mean, only five minutes. I can't be pregnant. Football player from the college. <laughs> oh. You must have really wow, been young. 
<laughs> right. It was, no, Andrea, it wasn't even five minutes, Nika. It wasn't even five Damn. minutes. When I say it was that quick, Damn. it was that quick. Well, it was good, almost like the minute he entered me. Yeah, it, it was like the minute he entered me and, you know, and broke my, you know, my hymen, it was over. Well, luckily, I did that on my bike, so I didn't have to worry Damn. about that part. <laughs> Damn, Tasha. I know. I'm, yeah, I know. Some very painful. powerful shit. I know. I'm like, I was gonna say, my man was I'm excited. Like, yeah, she got some. That that's some dangerous shit right there. He had some potent what? ass sperm. Damn. That's fucked up, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, that's... I mean it's not fucked up because you had a daughter that came out of it, and we love her. So yeah, but yeah. Still, you know, um... and me and our best friends <laughs> today. But yeah, that was my first experience, and you know, I, I never, I, and I think maybe that was the reason why I didn't understand sex after that. What the hell is up with this webcam, wow. dude? I could see that being confusing. Yeah. What is this? Who's that? You know, because this I didn't person get, putting this porno stuff. In I the have freaking... no idea. I've locked them before. Let me do it again. No, I'm doing it. Go ahead. Keep talking. Okay. I hand it. I'm sorry. But I I think that was the reason why I didn't understand how my body worked because of that experience, because I thought it was supposed to have been something that, you know, was going to be enjoyable. But because it wasn't, you know. I didn't know what it was supposed to feel like after. I, I enjoyed the mo I enjoyed the stroke. You understand one, what I'm saying? The one stroke. No, I I enjoyed <laughs> the stroke much. of sex before, <laughs> you know, <laughs> before my, you know, sexual experiences after 45. I enjoyed the stroke of sex, but mm -hmm. I didn't. It, there was nothing that came from that, right? Because sure. I didn't understand the connection to it. I thought it was something that you know he's supposed to do to me and i'm supposed to help him get there i you know it was weird that it was all about that it was all about the man and and not what your pleasure is that what you mean i thought my pleasure was his job and when when it never happened well, he, I, I, and I remember, I this question mm -hmm. let me the reason why i asked the question is and then I'll go myself. I hosted a um, as you know, I facilitate groups for domestic violence relationships. Somebody mute like your that. phone. So I host mute your phone. We can hear that, Tanika. Oh, I'm sorry. My my microphone so, is loud. Hold on. <laughs> so I host, you know, like I said, I host groups that talk about various different topics. In this particular group, what I talked about was the three stories of a man: the story of a boy, the story of a teenager. And the story of an adult. Okay. And when we got this meeting was so powerful because okay. I did it two times. And one of the meetings, um, one of the brothers in the meeting, he started off by saying that he was um basically what he had this fucked up family. And so what happened was is one of his crooked ass aunts set him up with like a um like an older woman. He was like uh I want to say he was like 14 years old. And when this crooked on set him set him up with this older woman, and she took him to town, and that was his first experience. Shortly after that, then that same aunt had sex with him also. And so, if you think about it, right? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. If you think about it, this is your first experience having sex with a woman is you you get violated by an older woman that's supposed to be a caretaker in the family, and then you have sex with your aunt. So, and, and you know, like, I'm not going to use the brother's names and none of y'all know him anyway, but I can talk, talk freely about the story. He said that it fucked him up so badly that he can remember having sex, dreams about having sex with almost all his female family members. And mm. then he talked about as he got Whoa. older. Yeah, he would be, he said he would be in church because now remember the same crooked ass family was firmly entrenched in the church. So he would be in the oh, church yeah. with them. He would be in the church with them and, you know, like he, there's preachers or whatever. And he'd be in the pew, basically not even paying attention to it because his mind was constantly on sex. I think when we talk about sex drive, when we talk about lasting long on sex, orgasms and things like that. These are very important things that we got to know about our partners. 
What mm-hmm. happened to you as a woman or as a man in your three stories? As a woman, mm-hmm. what was your first encounter with a man having sex? Was it a positive encounter? Was it a negative encounter? Was you molested? Was you raped? Because those encounters determine how you see sex as you're older. And if you remember, you guys who do follow me on Facebook with my on my lives, remember I had what was called the wordless experience, where when you're younger and you go through something, but you're, you're so young that you don't have the words to put to the, the, the specific situation. So as an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, you just say it's this and you put it away because that's the how you deal with it. But remember, as you get older, you don't, you really use no words to update that experience. So now, here's, here's what I'm getting to. I think a lot of men and women are still having sex as that 13, 14, or 15-year-old they were when they first got broken out of their virginity. If it was a bad experience or traumatic experience, we still live out that same thing because that's all we knew about sex. Yeah. And we didn't really update it through therapy or anything like that. So we just know this is how I'm supposed to be. And this is why I can tell you the God's honest truth. I've had experiences with women where I fucked the living shit out of them and then caught seven orgasms and then went crazy on me the next day and never wanted to talk to me again. And I was like, how in the world can I give you seven orgasms and your ass don't want to talk to me no more? And as I got older and I got into- I can answer that. Mm -hmm. Let me finish though. Go ahead. Um, Uh, When I got older and I started getting into the therapy world, what I understood is sometimes the trigger for that was that bad experience. Because when I went back to talk to some of those women, they were telling me, you didn't know what I told you about my childhood? I'd be like, about what? What do you mean? And in my mind, I'm like, all I know is I gave you last seven orgasms. I don't even know why we're having this discussion. And then she would be like, well, remember when my cousin touched me? Or remember, and what happened was, is the next day, whatever I was doing, triggered them and reminded them about that bad experience. So I think sometimes we get into these situations and our partner doesn't please us or our partner doesn't know how to learn us. And we be so busy wanting to judge them and call them names or whatever. And we don't try to figure out why is it you suck in bed? Why is it you don't ask no questions or, or communicate? Why is it that you go for this and you go for that, and I done told you not to do that no more. And, and, and what we don't realize is that person is still operating out of an eight, nine, 10, 12, 13 year old paradigm, is what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, sis, what was you gonna say when you said you could tell me the answer? Well, I mean, a lot of times, and I think, you know, getting back to my original um, uh, question with starting this, is that when, you know, you have that deep spiritual connection to someone, and the sex is that great, um, yeah. It can it can mess it can mess the mind up if you're not ready to con- if you don't understand it, and you're not used to that type of sex, it can mess a woman's mind up, and she will pull away from you. She'll pull away because she know you're gonna have her crazy outside, and you know, and some you know, bunny slippers, washing your car and all that, you know, doing some crazy (laughs) stuff because of that. Yep. You know, and a lot of women are, that's not attractive all the time to have seven that orgasm is good. It's okay. It's good. But some women can't handle you Mm -hmm. have given them seven orgasms. I used to tell my friends all the time, watch how you give your body to a woman. If whatever you do to me, you're doing to somebody else. That don't mean she can handle what you're doing. So if you get problems from that, it's nine times out of 10 because she knows that you're going to make her crazy. Hmm. And she will pull away from you. I totally hear you on that. Well, my first experience was this. And and, and, and I, again, I totally agree with you on that. Um, My first experience was this. and, you know, I, I had girlfriends all through my childhood, but we never crossed no line. And, and any man that jumps on this live will, 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 will agree that as men, we start lying about sex somewhere around 10 years old. We start telling all our homies we've been having sex and we've been doing all and we ain't did a goddamn thing. But, but, it, but we showing up be telling people what we did. But most of the average age from what I've seen in conducting groups of men that they come out of their virginity is anywhere from 15 to, to 15 to 18 
is generally the age. But we damn sure start lying about it as early as like 10, 9. <laughs> so either way, long story short, I was in my, my first year of high school. I was in the 10th grade. And I fell in love with this chick that was like two years younger than me. And um, I was, you know, doing what I was doing and trying to take it slow. One day she decided to invite me upstairs. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going upstairs. You know what I'm saying? So I knew what that meant. And I'm scared to death going upstairs because I, did, I didn't know what I was doing. And she took me upstairs and she was very, because she, I guess, you know, she had broke, been broken out of Virginia anyway. She was very patient with me. And, you know, she let me do what I did for the short period of time I did. And she was very patient with me because to her, it was more about the love and the feeling than it was about whether I knocked it out the box or not. And right. as we as we continued along, I got better. And she taught me certain things and I got better and she taught me certain things. So she was very nurturing and very patient with me. And mm-hmm. I think that that experience kind of shaped my life of whatever you want to call it, sex, love, making, whatever you want to call it. Because mm-hmm. if I don't have a situation like that, where the person is communicating, they're gentle, and they're trying to, because the way I look at life and the way I look at sex is, is that sex is something that you build. It's not something that you have. And okay. I think that uh, so many people just want to have sex and they don't want to build sex. So mm-hmm. in other words, if you don't perform at certain times, then a person going to get tired of you and they ain't going to be with you. But a, tr- a person that's really trying to build a good sex with you is going to understand that every time that you have it, that it's a building block and you try to get better each and every time. And if both people listen to each other, it becomes better. I think the problem is, is when either the man or the woman expects you to quote unquote perform. And that's what, what sets up the, the, um, the area for what they call performance anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There would be no performance anxiety if nobody expected you to perform. But that's okay. how we've been trained in the West to look at sex is as a fucking performance and not a beautiful thing between two people that you're yeah. building that hopefully the both of you can have a wonderful experience is, is my mm-hmm. thoughts. Yeah. Tanika. Tanika's my sister, you guys. Peace and love, sis. Yes. Sorry. Hi, peace, peace and love. I'm listening. I'm listening, but I'm, I'm eating my dinner. So I didn't want to be smacking in anyone's ears, <clears throat> but I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. With everything everybody has said so far. I'm gonna be very much into it when I finish up this omelet real quick, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enjoy your I'm omelet, hungry, y'all. This is my first time eating all day. I get I'm you. Working on, yeah. So, yeah, give me a couple of minutes, and I want to add to this. Okay. All right. But yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. But you know, um, even with Um, the practice of Kama Sutra, tantric sex, you can't do that with everybody because some people can't handle even that amount of emotion, emotionally driven sex and connection. Um, This, this jerk is still doing this. Who is that? Yeah. And he keeps coming back. I don't know how, how does Mm -hmm. he keep coming back? It's, it's gotta be out of one of our groups. But yeah, you have to be careful of what you, you know, what you give. And that and that's another question. Is it do you think it's safe to do that, you know, to everyone? Especially if do you don't what? know how that person's going to react. Give a person seven orgasms. Do you think it's good to do that to every woman? <laughs> All up. <laughs> well, how do you know you're gonna do that to everyone? No. You won't you don't know you're gonna do that until you do it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. No, it's not like it's not you. You don't go into every situation like I'm gonna give this chick seven orgasms. I mean, it just <laughs> happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so but, you're feeling so when you give her seven orgasms, it's because you was feeling her like that. Or well, she might have been feeling thing. me like that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a chemistry thing, I think. It's but there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I would never say that that's a wrong. I, like, under what circumstances is that wrong to do? I, I, <laughs> to be told. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody, I'm somebody, somebody wrote one or seven, we go together. <laughs> hey, there you go. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Yeah, I just I find it. You know, I think I, I think it's because of our conversation. This person keeps coming in with this sex stuff. Right. He doesn't so, realize. Ooh, they, they talk about realize. sex. Here's right. a webcam for you. Ew. Mm. Like, sorry. Grow up. No. We're adults. Whoever you We're are, grow here. up. <laughs> I and think he needs personal. an infinity Hello. blow job. Everybody shouldn't be able to see your shit. Like, no, it's not good. <laughs> I think he might need an infinity blowjob. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Calm his ass down. Right. He is doing way too much. I can't see what you guys are seeing, so I'm glad. I'm so here. happy that I cannot as well. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, we, we're getting rid of it so you don't have to. Yeah, that's, yeah, because it's ridiculous. But, you know, that's what happens because like, I see my daughter go through it. People just put stupid stuff on there just to, you know, try to get someone to come to their website. That little spam stuff. So, yeah. Oh, but, boy. yeah. Um, that was my, you know, my, my thoughts was is that, you know, I, I think we should be very careful of what energy, how much energy you give to someone. Because I've seen that be very, very dangerous to always give a person that many orgasms, even if you don't know whether you're going to do it or not. You know your body. You know who you are sexually. And men know how they roll. So if you know that this is how you roll with a woman, whether you would want you give one woman three orgasms and another one seven, you know, you know how your body is. You know how you put it down. It's not, it's, I don't think it's safe, you know, it's always good to do that to every woman. I don't well, think it's safe thing. to always stop? have sex with someone, <laughs> period. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty right. sorry. Here's the thing, energy, Personally, yeah. So, I get it. I get where, where you're coming, where, what you're trying, what you're talking about, Tasha, because you literally have to be, uh, and, and it actually also has to do with knowing what your power is. I understand my power and I'm not going to give my power away to just anybody. I'm going to be stingy with my energy. Not everybody is going to get everything from me. Not every man that I'm <clears throat> in an intimate relationship or intimate transaction or exchange with is going to get that energy. We got to be connected and you got to understand what your power is. That's what I feel like. You And if you know and that think you are capable of giving a woman seven orgasms, yeah, you might want to pull that back, homie, because, yeah. <laughs> Women are crazy. I'm just saying. They're crazy. Yeah. yeah, and they go crazy when you give them sex like they that. We know. They get stigmatized. I've seen get women get crazy. Call it what it is. Mm-hmm. Now I'm about to spark up. Y'all Y'all okay with that, right? <laughs> I need spark. Straight up. But, okay. No yeah, issues like, with it. All right. So, yeah, but I just think it's it's important for people to understand their power, especially when it comes to sex, period. You need to understand what power you possess and what you're giving out. And you're giving out that type of energy. Women will do crazy shit. They will. And you, some men. It takes a woman to tell you women are crazy. They're crazy. And they get digmatized. And... And they're ready to shut shit down and, yeah, do crazy shit, like slash your tires and see you smile at another chick. And, yeah, it's, it's a wrap. <laughs> so just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Brother Muhammad. Yes. <laughs> you feeling this? <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, you, you know what, though? Here's what I'm going to say to you. Um, I, I agree with you. I've been told this before. And my thing to you is, how do you stop? <laughs> because if you, and, and like, 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 like Mark said, if you go into a situation, you don't know that y'all are going to have even one orgasm. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a connection, if, if, if somebody, if you have multiple <laughs> orgasmic sex with somebody, that must be on, on the basis level, you got some kind of chemistry. Am I right or wrong? Right. Yeah. You know Absolutely. What I'm so yeah. Therefore, Absolutely. once you got the chemistry, you mean like it just depends on who you are, I think. But I don't think I could be like, hey, listen, this chick is crazy. I'm gonna have to. I, I'm gonna have to end this right now. I don't see me saying that to myself. 
So, of course. Because why are you having sex with a crazy chick anyway? Because people are attracted to crazy chicks. Well, then that, well, people then don't that present goes. themselves as crazy, but in the beginning, let's be real. People don't present exactly. themselves as crazy. Exactly. And a lot of they, guys you know are attracted. They, a lot of guys are attracted to crazy as level headed. Yep. A lot of guys like exactly. some get off on that crazy, crazy shit, mm-hmm. and it makes the remember, sex better when they're. It crazy. ain't always. But guys, it ain't always about oh. anything deeper than the sex. So if she's crazy, what difference does it make? I ain't with her anyway. Right. Oh. That's how they think. Yep. It's just the jump off. Jump off. <laughs> Damn. Not the jump off. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. They yeah. still do we, we they still doing those? Still. I ain't know. When did they ever I ain't stop? never been a jump off, so I don't know. When did they ever stop doing I mean, that? High. <laughs> wow. Ew, Dundad is in the house. I heard that. I is heard it? the Yeah, he's in the chat. Oh, Michael. Michael Etheridge is that who that who who you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's the dude. <laughs> that oh, is okay. the dude. Yeah, that's my Brownsville you brother. The, you want to come yep. on the line? Post the post the link there. My brother from Brownsville. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody, everybody on on panel. Uh, Nika is on New York. Is in New York. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The New York State. Wow. I'm only Milwaukee and online right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Brooklyn and Bed Stuy. All right. Okay. The New York City Marathon right, is a, tomorrow, so that I've been. I got three of my best friends that are actually running it tomorrow, so that's what I've been kind of concentrating on to being there for them. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, uh, that's good to know. That means I stay out of a cab tomorrow. Absolutely. Oh. Till we'll at least five. Nowhere. Right. Wow. Yeah, that they shut shutting all, everything yeah, the, all the streets are rolled. Yeah, shut down. Yeah. But here's the thing, like it's not as many people. Like it used to be like fifty five thousand people because of the the travel ban into this country. They've actually mm-hmm. brought it down to thirty three thousand. I'm sorry, actually it's thirty nine thousand. And it's only Americans running the race. So mm-hmm. and here's this is what New York did. New York did some crazy shit. They actually are releasing uh, or lifting the travel ban on Monday, the day after the fucking race. Uh, they did yeah. that petty shit. Oh. <laughs> so, so yeah, all of the foreigners, they all ended up having to defer the race until next year. Hmm. So only Americans are running it this year. So it's only 39,000. So. Oh, well. Only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a lot of people, but still, it's it's less than fifty five, which is a normal size, a normal amount that run New York City. Yeah. I ran it in twenty sixteen. I can imagine. Yeah, but anyway, ever, back to what we ever, were talking about. So, so you must be familiar <laughs> with um, running Runners High, right? Absolutely. Isn't that it's the greatest than, feeling in the world? It's better than this high. Isn't that the it's, greatest feeling in the world? Yes. People don't I, understand I experienced it until you've that. Experienced it. Yeah, I experienced run as high. Oh my God. It literally feels yeah. like you can run forever. Yep. And you don't like get you tired. There's no the fatigue. World. Yeah. Yep. 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 Janika, it's a good feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. Janika, I think everybody should experience that at least once in their life. Tanika has ran a bunch of how many her, how many marathons? I've only done running? four marathons. Only four marathons. My thing is a half marathon. I'm trying to complete all of the world major marathons. So I've done Chicago. I've done New York. Hmm. I'm trying to get into Berlin. I won't know until until, de- until January if I get into Berlin. So it's okay. Berlin, it's London, and it's Tokyo, and then it's Boston. So once. Once I complete those, I'm just only going to downgrade to just doing half marathons, and that's it. Okay. But New York, by far, is the best race today. It's 26.2 miles of a block party. Literally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, I know Madison. DJ cool Herc Madison. out there in the Bronx and shit. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, you anyway. guys, I 
I totally enjoyed um, the having this discussion. Um, uh, we, you know, we 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 try to come together to ask the questions to where when people listen to the lives, because a lot of people go back and do listen to the lives and uh, get, you know, get get that conversation started with each other. Um, so if you're listening and you're out there, um, please take some of the advice of the people on the panel and some of their experiences and make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing in bed. Um, it's not, it's not hard to, you know, what you don't know, go and study. It's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to ask someone, what do I do when this happens or why, why am I feeling this way or why am I not feeling this way? Go and sit and talk to someone when you're not having the sex that you feel that you deserve or that, um, no one talked to you about. Go and sit and talk to someone or get you know, get that study in because that's what I've been doing. I've, you know, decided to study it all kind of different ways and different things. And, um, you know, me doing that has led me to these questions of what happened my the first 45 years of my life that I didn't understand it, you know. So that's why we have these discussions. Can I repeat something? Because I said it earlier, but I think it needs to be said again for anybody sure. that didn't hear it. Definitely. Um, my mentor, because I'm into film production and stuff like that, so my, I had a mentor, and he explained what it's like to watch a movie or to just experience art, movie, plays, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he said that when you watch a movie, watching movies like having sex, you don't analyze everything that's going on while you're doing it because you have to enjoy the experience. He said you have to experience what you're watching or what you're going through or the art because the artist is trying to transmit something to you. That's why they created it. So if you're Mm -hmm. sitting there trying to figure out, oh, what's happened to see this is you're looking at the plot point. You try to to look at the cinematography and all this crap. That's Mm -hmm. what you do after the experience is over. But while the experience is there, you enjoy it you absorb it and they do the same thing with sex. Get out of your damn head mm-hmm. and be in it. And I, I've taken that advice from him. I think it applies to not just sex, but everything in life. I agree. Andrea, yeah. final thoughts? Um, just know yourself. Allow yourself to um, be honest with what you want honest with your partner and honest with yourself because sometimes you know you you uh we have this persona i think a lot of times as women we don't want to come off as too um extra too freaky to whatever yeah but that might be something that we are really feeling mm-hmm. and we're not comfortable enough to express that because we don't want to come off as a bad girl if you've been you know raised all of your life to be a good girl Mm -hmm. Um, so just know who you are, be comfortable with that, be comfortable with expressing that. And, um, you know, yeah, to get out of your head, enjoy yourself, just enjoy the moment. Exactly. Uh, brother, um, Muhammad last, uh, final words. Um, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful to have been on the panel with all of the people that are here fan of all of your voices and um your way of expressing things and that's really all i got to say anything that would what i had to say was in was in the show itself and i'm just happy to have been here thank you tanika word tanika i'm actually i only need to just say like i think that we need to stop looking at sex as taboo and we need to really start being more comfortable with having conversations like this so I'm glad that we I, I was a part of it, you know, even though I came in on the tail end of it. I think it's important that we look at sex as it's not just something to just create a child, even though we've been taught that way. You know what I mean? Like the reality is, is we can we can enjoy it and be OK. Like it should we shouldn't be shamed to enjoy things like sex. I enjoy sex. 
and 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 I don't feel like that's a bad thing, but I think that the the message that has been sent is that we are not we shouldn't be enjoying it, and we should. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not a sin to enjoy sex. So right. I just think it's great that you're have we're having these conversations, and I think we should have it more often um, as people, as you know, people of color. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. You know how I realized Can I make it wasn't a suggestion? sin. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, go ahead, bro. Well, you know, what I was, was going to say, say is that hopefully in a future live, can we talk about the effects of religion on sex? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, that would be absolutely. beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. that. Actually, yes. that goes in line with what I was going to say, line, actually. Yeah. yeah what, actually, what Tanika was <laughs> leading. That's the reasons why I brought it up. Mm-hmm. To it. Yeah. Exactly. What I was going to yeah, say is, you know how I knew how I knew that sex wasn't evil? Because I don't believe that God could oh. be cruel enough to design a black woman like she, like he did and then tell <laughs> me I can't touch it. <laughs> Say that. Say <laughs> that. So once once I came in, once I came brother. to that conclusion, I said, no, I think God is not that cruel. Brothers. I'm like, how could God be that mean to create this beautiful God in front of me? No, stop. So that, that shattered that whole religion thing for me. Exactly. <laughs> well, we got to do it because because remember, I was a minister for many, many years. And yeah. I, I want to talk about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and see, we, we're, me and Tanika are preacher's kids. So exactly. you, we That's got, we got some stories on that one. <laughs> Yo, <Yeah>. Latasha. <laughs> yes, Latasha. we got some stories on that one. Yes, dear. When you end the live stream, don't leave the studio. Because I want to talk okay. to you. Okay, Miss O'Shawn is here. Um, did you have anything to add? She she uh, she popped back in. I wanted to at least acknowledge her presence because I do see her name there. Greetings, sis. Hi. Hi. She's in the chat. So, yeah, she's in the chat. So I'm gonna oh, give her okay. a minute to see if she says anything. Or if you want to come on live to say any final words, um, I maybe you've been listening. Um, she was here earlier, but something happened with her audio, and it yeah, you know, she popped back in later on. So, but um, yeah, we're ending the live right now. But if you have anything to say, just put it in the comments. Glad you guys were a part of this. And yes, Mr. Um, Muhammad, we are going to have that discussion very very soon. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Peace, everybody. It's nice been a pleasure. Everyone. Have a good night. Right. Peace and love you. Take it, take it easy. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Peace. Hey. Hey. Good show. You're killing yes. it, man. You yes. see, this is what I wanted from you, man. I'm finally, I'm happy because I'm getting what I actually always wanted. You weren't going to let me get away with not doing it, so I had to get on board. <laughs> but don't you feel good that you're actually doing it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I'm, getting hear your it. Voice. I'm getting more used to it, you know, yeah. because, you know, Mark, I'm a background person. You know, I like to see things. I like to make things happen and put people out front. That's I've always been like that, you know, so. It was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, do I really want to do this? Do I want to get up and talk to people and be up front and, you know, and my face is there, you know, because you guys don't like showing your faces, which is really, really not cool. But I understand it. <laughs> if I, got, I, I don't have a problem showing my face. It's just that mm-hmm. when I'm home, I'm like mad comfortable. And for me to get on camera, I got to take care of my background and put, you know what I'm saying? It's just too yeah. much trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. That's the, that's the only reason why. Like, it's easier for me to just throw up a pic, put the mm-hmm. mic on, and talk. <laughs> right, right. But, um, but no, I, I appreciate. And I'm not. You. I don't look as good as you, so that's another reason. No, you look better. Oh please! Let's see. Well, he that's why better. you're my friend. He looks that's better, y'all. Friend. He looks better. Wait, are we still alive? Uh, you told me not to hang up. No, I said. <laughs> oh God, I can't believe we on this. In the live stream, but stay in the studio. Oh, okay. We got four people out there. H- hello. At least tell me who you are, because uh, we only see Facebook user out there. Thank you guys for showing up and come back another time. Um, we'll be going live again on Tuesday. 
Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll go on live again tomorrow. Let me let me think about it. But definitely Tuesday. So I'll talk to you guys later. Ending it now. Bye bye. Okay. I'm lucky we I saw that because like.